So I wanted to share some, you know, sample roles that you'd find, you know, as a product manager. Uh, there are a variety of, I mean, variety of titles. Nevertheless, this is called Glassdoor. So you'd come here and you need to create an account in order to apply. But just to give you a, an indication of some of the skill sets and like what is being desired of PMs. But the most critical thing are most of the things that were done in the classes. So being able to understand uh, new ideas that arise from all over the company and then how to take those ideas and flesh them into what we did last week. You flesh them into a product proposal. Someone in, in marketing or someone in, in the legal side of the business may not know how to create business proposal product proposals. So what they do know how to do, however, is to come up with an idea to say maybe we could implement a new feature on the app that would enable us to serve customers better. And that's all you will need to do. That's all they will give you. And you can sit down with them, you know, have a conversation to understand what they mean a bit more. And then you will flesh that out into a product proposal. And that's something you won't, that's not something you master from day one. That's something you master over time by progressively putting in the time, the effort, and just going over the framework that, you know, you've been given. And it's, it's a continuous practice that builds you into a, you know, a more proficient person at using those templates. But I, I wanted to show you, you know, some of the, the PM roles that are available out there in the market. Uh, let's say, maybe not Whole Foods, but SMG would be more. Yeah, so from, uh, we've looked at define and prioritize features based on customer needs. Uh, we've looked at it from customers' needs, but it's also industry trends and business goals, you know, all of these, but essentially these are, these are some metrics that you need to bear in mind. Every business exists to make a profit. So they will have a goal as to how they want to make that profit. Industry trends right now, it's AI. Everything is going AI. So if you're implementing your platforms, you need to think of ways that you could incorporate AI into your platform. So that's what is meant by industry, you know, industry trends. And you look at uh, cross-functional collaboration, you know, being able to work with various departments within any business. So if there's any legal uh, side of the business that you need to understand in order to help you build a product that is, is stronger and more capable for customers, you need to be able to speak with, you know, various people from different departments, that be marketing, operations, finance, you know, any department that exists within the business, you need to be able to collaborate with stakeholders to gather requirements and feedback. You know, all of, like I just said, you know, if you need, if someone came up with, a, with an idea and that idea is being pushed forward, like I said, as a PM, your role is not you know, your role is not there to come up with all the ideas. Your role is wherever there's an idea, any idea. It could be an idea for a brand new product. It could be an idea for a feature. Think of WhatsApp right now. WhatsApp may be thinking, let's come up with a new feature to help us uh, serve our customers better. Features versus building a company from scratch. Those are two different challenges. A feature is just one feature. For, for instance, you know, WhatsApp right now, it could be, how do I make a call to just 10 people all in, in, in with, a, with, a, you know, with a click of a finger? How do I do that? That could be the feature, that could be an idea. 
that WhatsApp wants you to develop. They want you to be able to refine that creative product spec. So create a product proposal so that it can at least be shown to a few people in the business and then the company can decide if it wants to actually push that forward to development. If the answer is yes, then your product proposal will be you know reviewed and people will add feedback to it. So you write proposals for either a brand new company, so you're 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 about to start your own you know business, you need a proposal. You join a you know you join a, a business that already exists, either it's a small company, it's a medium sized company, or it's a large enterprise. It's all the same thing. And so you know we 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 practice the act of gathering requirements. This is something that we'll look into today. So you'd see you know you see how that could be done and how you go from just an idea all the way to uh, that end to end delivery in the end. But you know so in in this role you can see here it's it's giving you some you know some of the core requirements. I just wanted us to you know look here and to see some of the keywords that we have been practicing in, in, in our classes so far. For example, develop a deep understanding of customer needs and pain points. That's what we did last week. You have an idea, you need to understand what are customers really asking for. Okay, but what are their pain points? We looked at this last week. Yeah, any idea, any problem you try to solve, you need to think what is the need. When someone is hungry and they say they need food, what is your pain point? Your pain point is hunger. So you need to feed them. Now how do you feed them? You give them food. In, in, in the world of business, if, you know, with using the idea that Nanye came up with last week, for instance, uh, which was, you know, Chores Connect. Someone has a job at home and they need someone to help them do it. And that's not time to preach to them. You know, that's time to give them the support that they need. What is the support? Give them a platform that they can come on and hire someone to help them clean their homes. Maybe that's what they need. Maybe they need a nanny. Maybe they need to do the laundries. You know, so your platform gives them access to do all of those things. Now, if Chores Connect, uh, this company became a massive conglomerate around the world. And then now, Noye says, I'm looking for more product managers to come help. Guys, could you come up with a few ideas that we can use to enhance and optimize our platform so that we can become even bigger? So these proposals are not just about coming up with new ideas. It's about either it's a feature to enhance an existing product or you're thinking of a brand new startup that doesn't exist i'm not sure if this was made clear to everyone but i just wanted to emphasize that this is just to test your ability to come up with ideas is in in product management how great are you with being able to think of your feet that's that was a you know that's the whole point of this exercise to help develop that skill because that's a skill it can be developed just like everyone can learn you know, the rules of numbers, two plus two is four. Everyone can learn that. Developing, being able to come up with new ideas works in the same way. It's a practice that you do and everyone has ideas. I think it's just the confidence that we need to build. So that's, this exercise, you know, is meant to help you build that confidence in being able to come up with new ideas and then in the end, put them in a coherent format that anyone can read and think wow that's that's not bad they don't have to say that's perfect if that's not bad that's the goal so this is what we did last week we did uh, the we collectively in the class and we uh, i mean we didn't give it a name but it was meant to be the platform for simplifying housekeeping duties 
and now we have a name for it which is Jaws Connect you know and this was shared in, on Slack so I would think everyone has had some time to browse over it and just try to understand and again it was meant to show you how you go from uh, from having that workshop in a you know in a mirror and then from Miro all the way to here. I did say Miro was just optional. Miro is like a platform. You know, it's it's not, Miro doesn't give you a product proposal. It's just a medium. In the same way that I can write with a pen or I can write with a pencil. Either I use a pen or a pencil, it's irrelevant. It's more about what I write. So Miro is such a medium. It's just a, a platform that you use to help you. And I, I also did give the other format which was just the template itself i said you, you didn't have to use mirror mirror is just optional it's just a tool uh, and i provided this template you know i said you could essentially just you know use this to help you you know bring out those ideas and proactively practicing is what would build that confidence so mirror is not mandatory in your product management role you use mirror only if you think you've mastered it otherwise you know being able to have conversations with people and just make regular notes like you would in in your daily lives you know you bring out a pen you bring out a, a notepad and just capture the ideas that you know come to mind or as you have meetings with people you would use a tool like mirror only if you think you've you know you understand the purpose for which you want to use it for okay so i wanted us to briefly go through uh, chores connect uh, which is from our output last week uh, and we saw what you know we did in the mirror board i can go over the mirror board again nice and sweet and Yeah, so we, we had it here and we called it help away. I, I you know, as something that right on you know, right on the go, it was just then and then of course. And that's just to show you the evolution of ideas. You start with something very basic and fundamental, but as you continuously evolve the idea, you find that you come up with, you know, better ways to describe, better ways to coin terms better way to like explain things as well okay and so we we you know we highlighted all of the pain points we said why would people come to help away the pain points that will make people want to use such an app you know a, a platform that helps them to fulfill their housekeeping duties and we said these were all of the reasons you know and then we we then did some you know at a high level what were some of the housekeeping services you know that people would come in there to do and also what were some of the features you know that people could use because ultimately that's what people would use in order to fulfill their needs so and we mentioned things like making a booking so if someone wants to have a a, a laun their laundry done they will need to place a booking and the app or the platform needs to facilitate that and from a platform's perspective people need to feel safe we mentioned how they will need to verify their identity you know we mentioned how people that are looking for the jobs will need to bid for those jobs and then the owners of those jobs will then say yes i accept your bidding i think based on your profile you're very qualified so i think you will clean my car really well or you clean the house really well or you do my laundry really well these were some of the reasons we said so creating a bidding system would help you know the people in the platform and we said this was going to be a two-sided platforms so a platform where people can list the jobs that they have 
and platforms where people that have those skill sets can come in and bid for those jobs and win. And so it facilitates a win-win relationship. If I have a job and someone can fulfill that job, then they get paid, I get my job done, I'm happy, they're happy with their money, everybody wins. That is a you know that is a key driver for the success of this platform. And so we had the ideas here. And so you can see I, I didn't I don't really need mirror to do this. Mirror was just a way to visualize it. I don't really need mirror. I could have done all of this in this template. I could have done all of this in this template. What is a high level elevator pitch? A housekeeping app that helps people to uh, get their jobs done and those that are looking for jobs can make money. That would be the elevator pitch. What is the problem? I would then explain the housekeeping you know, problem, the pain points. I would explain them here. What is the solution? An app that brings people together to fulfill their needs. You know, their needs could be the housekeeping needs and on the other side would be people looking for money, to make money. They can come in here and provide the labor and make money. And who will be the target potential customers? Again, people that don't have time to do their own, uh, you know, housekeeping needs or duties. And then people that are looking, you know, looking for a way to make money will come on this platform. So these are potential target, you know, customers. Could be uh, students, it could be business professionals. So again, and that will be it. That's the idea fully explained. So I'm just keen on really emphasizing because I've seen that some of you are really valuing mirror over the idea itself. The idea of a proposal is far more important than mirror. Mirror is just a tool. So I just wanted to really emphasize that. Any, any questions so far? Awesome. Uh, someone either I've raised, I'm not able to see the platform when I'm presenting. Go ahead, Saeed. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Please, I want to, please, should be the platform, the platform that uh, we need to explain to people that should on is Jira, right? Yes, yes. Okay, that means we need to explain everything of Nigeria before going to Europe. Is that what you mean? No, no, no. Um, so there's... I, I, I think the best way, maybe I can bring this back a notch. It's, it, it's just like at home. If you don't know how to cook, I can give you all the ingredients. It means nothing. You see? So I'm, I'm trying to move the focus away from the ingredients. The focus should be on, do I know how to cook? If you know how to cook and I give you any ingredient, you'll be able to cook something off it. All right? So I want to move the focus away from the tools. The tools are meant to help you, not to derail you. Yeah? And also the tools as well, you don't need to learn all the tools. So if you know how to use a word processing platform such as Google Doc, for instance, that's good enough. The majority of your time will be spent on Google Docs or Microsoft Word document or your Excel or your, uh, your Microsoft presentation, which, you know, these platforms are exactly like this, being able to type text, that's pretty much it. So the focus on the tools. If you ever find yourself focusing on the tools, you, you just need to step back a bit. And that's what I'm explaining to say. As opposed to using Miro, you could have, this. that's why I created this template and shared with everyone. To say, use this template. Miro is a nice to have. It's not mandatory. Miro is meant to assist you. These technologies, they're known as assistive technologies. That means they assist you if you know how to use them. 
If you don't know how to use them, then you can use a different template. And with Miro, Miro, no one taught me how to use Miro. You're meant to utilize it as you keep, you know, as you keep growing. And I did the video showing you the like the fundamentals of Miro, which is it's literally being able to add these sticky notes. And you could see how we use them here. See, we we literally use them to coin our pain points. So it's using it to serve your needs. But if you don't first understand what your needs are, then it's it's really like you know giving someone a car to drive and they don't know how to drive. So you first need to know how to drive, so understand your needs. And then you will find that your use of mirror will be so much more enhanced. You will know how to use it better if you understand what you're trying to do. And that comes with just, you know, playing with it. So you come here and just, I don't know, just draw stuff and you paste things in, but not really having a, a why you're doing things. You just know, ah, okay, that's how, that's how I do that. And that's, 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 that's how you learn the platform. Because at the moment, you don't have any use case as to why you should do things on Miro. Like running a workshop is what we did last week. And that might be the only thing. But my argument is, you don't need to do that on Miro. You can do that here. So that way, you're focused on learning only the key things that really matter. And then progressively, the same things that you do on this template would be things that in your own time, you can say, okay, let me see, could I, how do I write a paragraph in Miro? Or how do I enter bullet points in Miro? How do I create, you know, uh, sticky notes like these in Miro? How do I create this kind of text in Miro? These are some of the questions that you ask yourself. And it's a combination of these, you know, little pieces together that overall gives you a better understanding of Miro. So it's there's no one platform. If there's any course out there that advocates learning, uh, you know, Miro and learning these platforms, there is no course. These are meant to be assistive. This is a product management, you know, course to teach you the product management thinking. And then these tools would only help you to be a better product manager. If you don't know the product management itself, then you can be an amazing user of Miro or any platform. It doesn't mean anything because you won't know. Like, what are you using Miro for then? I just really am I'm keen on emphasizing this because I will be introducing more platforms and I don't want us to get stuck on the platform. We, we should always think, okay, what is the goal? What am I trying to do? And how can I use this platform to help me? Any more questions? No from me. Okay. And if if a platform I, I feel it's you know extremely you know invaluable, then a hundred percent I would I would give, you know, several ways. I would even give it time. It's the same thing with Slack, like we saw, you know, it's literally, it's a, it's, it's the same way that you would use your, uh, your, your WhatsApp. You can create groups on here, in the same way you can create groups on, on, on WhatsApp. You can create groups on Slack as well. You can have conversations, you know, in the same fashion. So it, it's just being a custom to having those conversations and so I wouldn't emphasize okay guys let me spend time showing you how to use slack I can give you a brief overview but the rest of it you will just you will pick it up as you go you just have to have faith and the confidence that you will understand I saw some of you messaging on slack I was very happy because that's is a continuous use of it that would give you that confidence that you need so don't be afraid as PMs, you know, you're going to deliver so many more platforms. So you just have to, you know, stay confident and just keep an open mind to learning because you're going to meet platforms that will challenge you. 
and it won't be the likes of Miro, it won't be the likes of Jira, it won't be the likes of Slack. These are very simple platforms. You will master them. So all I say is be patient and give yourself the gift of time because over time you will master all of these platforms. Okay, let's move on to this week. So hopefully everyone reviewed the Chose Connect product proposal. So in it, we had the problem statement. So a problem statement is also known as pain points. And from the job spec I've just shared, you're expected to be able to understand, you know, product problems. So if you are the PM at Chose Connect, uh, maybe Chose Connect will have a variety of PMs, for example. Let's just do a, a quick, just so you can understand. Uh, so, at Chose Connect, product roles. So, Chose Connect could have a product manager that focuses product manager one. Let's say it's a company now worth uh, $5 billion. As we know, these tech startups or these, you know, styles of startups can be, they can grow really quickly in value. And so let's say it's worth $5 million, $5 billion, you know, dollars. And, and so the company believes it needs to really keep a good, solid, fundamental product around. And so with such companies, they tend to have lots of product managers. And so product manager one, I mean, they could have up to, you know, up to 30 plus PMs. Yeah. And so here they could have one PM focus on uh, accounts. Account just means your registration, uh, sign in. Registration, sign in. Uh, profile so these things these they require someone to manage them and continuously find out ways if I don't know how many people have a have let's say even most devices these days if, if you have an iPhone for instance you have your your face ID or you have your fingerprint those those things you know those are advancement if you looked at Apple or, you know, the iPhone 10 years ago, it never had Face ID. You know, it was PIN and then upgrade from that was being able to use fingerprint. That was a big deal for them. Now they've advanced. Now is Face. There's going to be a point where I don't know how it's going to advance, but Face is going to, it's not going to be the, you know, the latest feature. There's going to be much more. So being able to, consistently find ways to optimize and enhance these features you know registration sign in like being able to optimize them it's crucial to keep you ahead of your competitors or keep you ahead of competitors in the market and so you could have not just 1 p.m even you know i did a you know, i did a project for the bbc the bbc is this uh, that's the BBC hired my company to come in and help them optimize their their sign in, and within the sign in they had well over fifty product managers, fifty product managers just dealing with sign in and registration, yeah. So register and sign in, and then you have to maintain the accounts, and then you have to think from, let's say, you know the type of users. And then you have to think from age group. So it seems, it sounds really small, like, oh, it's just signing and registration. No, it's, it's such a massive piece. There's so much to do because this is a gate. This is an entry gate into consuming content. And then there is some content on here that is age restricted. So when you do register for an account, we have to know your age. And then whenever you go to a content that is age restricted, that content won't be surfaced to you. And then there is also geographical, you know, restriction. 
in when I'm in the US, for example, there's some content on, on the BBC that I don't have access to. It's not shown to me. So that's only restricted to people in the UK, for instance. And this is the same globally. If you try to access some content in the BBC from Nigeria, you won't get access to it. You know, they may show you BBC Nigeria. That's it. So there are all of these restrictions. Those are all controlled on their account based on your information, based on your sign-in. And so accounts is heavy. So what does that mean? Accounts here could be, it, it, it needs not be the same thing. I'm just using this as an illustration to help you understand that whilst we traditionally think of accounts as just being sign-in and sign-out and registration, no, it isn't. It's, there's, so, there's so much more complexities to it. It's, it's far beyond just registering, signing in, and updating your profile. The information here could be used to really enhance and personalize experiences for various users. And so that's why in most companies, they have so many product managers just serving one, like one feature. In, in, in which case here, it's your account. That's the feature here. And all of these things can be achieved within accounts. So you can end up having so many PMs just doing one thing. I mean, it looks on the outside like it's one thing, but there's so many things, you know, that have to be unpacked and understood. And then over the lifetime of the product. And so on a daily basis, uh, people, you know, these product managers are optimizing and enhancing this service. And so, so many people are required. And then you move on to the next feature, you could have payment. So how is payment done within Chores Connect? You know, we, we did say that it's gonna function uh, like someone comes to your house, does the chores, as soon as they leave, as soon as they finish, they get paid. So you need to, you know, program the logic. So that means really understanding how that will function. And how do you do this? This is done collectively. So it's you as a product manager in trying to understand. So you, you bring your expansive understanding of apps. As a PM, you're meant to be a, a subject matter expert. And that all that means is you're used to using lots of apps. You see something from another app, you try to understand how it works. For example, Many of us have used Ubers. How is it that I call an... Well, Uber in Nigeria works a bit different, that you have to pay cash. But in some places, Uber is... Your, you connect your bank card, your bank details in there, and as soon as you call the Uber and you leave, they take your money instantly from, your, from the account. And that's how it works. In the same way, on this app, we can say payment leaves instantly once you fulfill the you know the, the the chores or it could be you're paid in cash so you you give customers choices so you discuss these things and once you discuss them that's known as your your stakeholder requirement gathering so meeting with people within the business to get their inputs people want to be involved so you have to involve people you know having the, the idea that you need to involve people, having that sewn in deeply ingrained in you, it's a great skill and a great understanding to have. You need to involve. This isn't a command and tell. This is how payment needs to work. You know, you need to just think, how do I bring, how do I get people together to discuss? So it could just be bringing people together and posing the question, how does everyone feel we should handle payment? Just posing that question and then you get ideas. People will give you, will give you their opinions and you, you bring it all together. And then in the end, you take that away and you incorporate, you, you form it, you turn it into something that is understandable. So we saw this, this is what we, we took from the workshop and it was turned into this. This is understandable. This is brainstorming. So learning how to move from 
brainstorming into a document that is coherent. It's a skill set that as a PM, it needs to be something you get used to doing. People will give you ideas, whether bullet points and so on. So taking those bullet points and then expanding upon them into a document that you can then share back and then receive feedback. Any questions so far? No. Awesome. No from me. Okay. Good. And did did we all review this product proposal? Choice Connect? Did anyone review and had questions? It was shared on, on Slack in product proposals. Uh yeah, here. So we had the Chores Connect and we had the Touch Catch. Okay. Well, have a, have a read at it if you hadn't reviewed it. And yeah, hopefully if you have any questions, just post them on Slack. You know, use the product proposal channel and just put a comment. If you wanted to tag me, you will just do the at, yeah, at Darlington, and that will be me. I'll come up, and you put your question. So again, it's this is how I want us to, like, use to learn these things. It's by, by doing. So being able, if you wanted to send me a message, just tag me in that manner, and and then you your question follows after, in the same way you would on. Uh, on any platform really okay and so we turn this into this uh, and i've in right at the beginning of this i had said you, you don't need to use mirror you can use this to develop your high level idea so you move in your case so you might move from this template into this so you move from this into this and then we're about to transition now into our next uh, as well okay we're about to transition now into the next phase of this process i think when you asked a question last week what will be the next step after the product proposal and now we're about to go into it so this is a new concept uh, so once you reviewed, once you've turned, you know, the idea, the idea was given. Sorry, guys, let me let someone in. Uh, okay. Admit. So once someone gives you an idea, we would love to have a, a, a platform in, in Africa that allows people to book flights. That's our premier platform that we're using for the purpose of teaching this product concept and then we then go ahead and produce you know an idea yeah essentially highlight the idea try to unpack it a little bit more to make to understand the problem so we do we do that and then we've from there we'll move on to the product proposal and I, i've shared the proposal with everyone i think i put it uh, some time back. Uh, yes. So it's it's shared here. That's in general. And you go from the product proposal. You know, you, you looked at the problem, the solution, uh, and any more ideas you could have. You know, like thinking of revenue as a product manager you everything we do like you need to also have your business hat on like how we're going to make money is this idea profitable and what are some high level features you know and then so the next phase now is being able to uh, let's test our idea 
in our case it's flight scanner uh, and being flight scanner then it's you know it's a platform that we set is going to help people to fly and travel and book book their flights for travel within africa so i can go from nigeria to congo to south africa i can go i can book flights to anywhere within africa if i try to book flights to somewhere outside of africa it won't i won't be able to this is only for booking flights within africa just giving you a recap of what flight scan what flight scan is about okay so we proceed to we're thinking of survey so we do a survey we move from a survey because we want to validate our idea. We want to validate whether this platform would actually resolve a problem. Would a platform resolve a problem? It could be a plat in our case, we're thinking of a platform. But in if you are joining a you know a company that already exists, let's say you join let's say you join uh, WhatsApp. WhatsApp already exists and they've brought you in. To help them optimize maybe look you're going to be the new uh, messaging product manager so within the context of messaging yeah. sorry did someone have their okay so you've joined whatsapp as the new product manager to help them optimize their messaging function. So at the moment, we all know how to message ourselves. We can't hear you. Uh, apologies, guys. Not sure what happened there. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, great. Great. Tech gone bad. Okay, so I was saying you've joined WhatsApp as a, let's say you've joined WhatsApp as a new product manager and your role is to help them optimize uh, optimize their, their messaging function. And we all know how to message on WhatsApp currently. I can go in on WhatsApp and message my friend. And... Hello. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening. Apologies, guys. Not sure why it's muting me. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, Okay, please do do let me know if it goes on mute again. Okay. Right. So let's say we try. So the idea of surveys is to validate your product proposal. You do a survey to get people's feedback, to hear if what you think is a problem is actually a problem. That's the whole purpose of doing surveys. So you do a survey or interviews. You do these to help you validate your, your ideas. Validation simply means to test if, for example, if we go with uh, Chores Connect, for instance, we do a survey and people tell us that actually I'm, I'm okay doing my laundry on my own. Let's say we spoke with 20 people and 19 of them said they're fine doing their, their, doing their, their laundry or whatever housekeeping chores by themselves sorry could you mute yourself please yeah don't worry i've done it uh so you spoke with you know 20 people 19 told you they're happy to do their chores by themselves that tells you that this app or this platform this chores connect platform will not solve any problem for people and so you, as the originator of the idea, who wants to bring this to life, you have to kill. You have to kill the idea. You have to forget it, and find a different idea. And that's the whole purpose. You bring ideas to the world, 
in order to make a profit, in order to solve problems. If customers during the survey or during your interviews or during your conversations have made it clear that this idea will not solve a problem for them, then you have to abandon that idea and find the next one. This is what companies do. And so within the company, you join WhatsApp and they've told you we really need to enhance our messaging functions within our app. Did someone have their hands raised? Yeah, no. So you've joined WhatsApp as a PM for the messaging function, and there are you know there are a range of ideas that people have come up with within the company of how they could potentially enhance that messaging function. You now as a PM. You're responsible for trying to understand those ideas. And so you may end up turning several of those ideas into product proposals. And then now, let's say you had 10 ideas. And so you now have 10 proposals. And you're reviewing. And then you decide that maybe you take three of these proposals and try to create surveys or interviews with customers, with potential customers, to have conversation, to understand, to validate whether the ideas, the proposals would make sense to proceed into development and release them to the world. And so in this surveying or interviewing, in this phase of validating, you simply test whether those ideas would be fruitful. Go ahead, Godfrey. Yeah, don't, um, Ima is on the waiting. He's trying to join. Uh, I don't think there's no one here, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. So you end up having all of those ideas and you need to validate them. So you have a bunch of surveys that you can do or a bunch of interviews, focus groups, one-to-one -one interviews with customers. And so before you can do that, you need to have a brainstorming session with yourself. So what exactly are you trying to validate? You know, you're trying to validate things like, in our case, with Flight Scanner, we're trying to validate pain points. You know, like what exactly our customers needing we said you know people lack flights availability we said prices are a bit high we said accessibility how easy you know it is to make a uh, flight booking or reservations you know in my experience with flights in nigeria there's can i mean you can you can sneeze and they've canceled flights or before you sneeze they've canceled flights they're too easily you know canceled you're traveling somewhere, you're expecting a flight to be, you know, consistent. You get to the airport, they've canceled it. It's all very annoying. And so that's it. That's it. Desire. That's my assumption. Is there's an assumption is there's a desire for a, you know, a better management of these things. And so this flight booking platform would be able to hopefully may not be able to stop flights cancellation but it's in how it is managed. And so there are better ways to manage that. And so maybe if we know that some airlines are prone to cancellation, you could find better ways to serve customers. Maybe you give them, you know, cheaper flights. And so if they should ever be canceled, customers might not be so, you know, so unhappy. Or maybe being aware that your flight might be canceled you know, you're already aware of it, so it wouldn't sting as much as you would, you know, otherwise. And then, you know, how how are complaints handled? 
and then went on to put a few questions around each uh, problem. So flights availability, uh, the prices, uh, and accessibility. You know, could I use could I book flights on my mobile phone, or do I need you know a a laptop or a computer system? So do I need a tablet? So brainstorming at a high level what you might need to create in your survey. So this requires thinking. And as a PM, this isn't something you're expected to do within a few hours. This can take you days because it's something that requires lots of deep thinking. And so you sit down and think, what sort of problems could I validate from users? And you then proceed to you know brainstorm these ideas. And then you also start creating uh, the survey and in our case for the intra africa travel uh, the survey was created so we want to find out you know people's age demographics so we looked at okay please uh, select your age bracket so it was done in this manner uh, and so it's from under 18s all the way to 65 or older and then you want to find out people's genders so of your potential customers, the potential people that could use your platform, you want to find out what might their age range be. So all of this is, it's useful. Remember, this is a, a, a survey that you've given out to people to fill. And so you, you want to find out the age. And this is not the only way to do it. You could, you might choose to say, maybe I only want to know from 25 onwards and how you group the age brackets might be different. So there's no like one size fit all. There are several ways to do it. You can choose to say, maybe I'm going to do from 18 to 30, for instance, and then I'll then do from 31 to 40, and then from 40 to 50 and so on. So there are several ways to do this. You do them based on your own logic based on your own thinking and then you have to be open-minded let's say one of you right now says eh, i don't think we need under 18s i would then ask okay why why do you why do you think so he said well under 18s i don't believe we want them to be customers on our platform because of so so and so you know it could be maybe financially you know they're not really able and we don't really care about them and so if everyone agrees I would then delete and that would be it. That's the purpose of doing this and then running maybe my manager or colleagues. As I said earlier, you would hardly be the only PM. There will be a lot of other PMs available so you can always pick their brains. So in our case then, we've got under 18, so we leave it. And then we wanna find out people's genders. In today's world, unfortunately, you know, we we have multiple uh, people identifying as, you know, many genders, which makes it a, very tricky because if you so far here, you can see that we've only got these people specified and we've said there's male, there's female, there's non-binary, there's prefer not to say, but someone can eat, someone can end up getting offended saying they don't feel represented in our survey because there could be something else. There is such a gender as unspecified, for example. Uh, and, you know, so you may, they may be looking for that. And in our case, we haven't included that. And so you want to run people within the business. You can take your survey, for instance, and just, you know, give to a colleague to complete and give you feedback. And your colleague may say, okay, maybe you need to add some more things in your gender or you need to take some things off. But generally speaking, there is no right or wrong. It's just being able to, you know, understand uh, what at least you should have as a, as a base. And this is the base. I mean, in fact, the base is uh, male and female and perhaps prefer not to say that's the base. So this is the basic, this is a flaw that you should have. So anything else that you add, it's only ever a bonus. It's not mandatory. And then 
We also want to find out cultural residents. Where are people from within Africa that will be taking our survey? The idea of this question is that if we find out that most people uh, that will be flying with us, they're spread out across the continent and they all have the same problem. That's great. That validates that our product would really solve a problem. It would really help people. And then we also want to find out how often they travel within Africa in a year. Some people, if we find that people travel very frequently and they all have problems, then that's really good. It means that the problem that we're trying to solve is very important. So you can see the assumptions that we're making. The same thing, if you don't uh, choose connect and you're creating a survey and you find out that people often require housekeeping help and they do so frequently, that's a great thing to know. It validates that this problem, once you release a solution, it would really solve a problem for people out there. And so it's, it's, val it's very valid, it's valuable for you to do. And then we also want to find out the travel preferences. You know, what factors are most important to people when booking a flight, when choosing a flight within Africa. You know, here we said select up to three. You know, some people are price sensitive. If the price of a flight is really high, they will never book. You know, they will prefer to travel by road, for instance. Some people don't really care about price. Some people care about you know, the, the schedule, like, is it a good schedule or is it something that uh, it's, you know, that they fly maybe once a day. That means if you miss the one flight, you're, you're really screwed. You have to wait until the next day or whatever next they'll be flying. And for some people, it's the airline reputation. Some people, based on the reputation, they will never fly with some airlines. Some people, like I said earlier, it's the time. You know, what time do they fly and how often? Some people, you know, the frequency and are they direct flights or are they stopovers? And then you look at some of the additional services that are offered. You know, for some people, it's being able to be given a meal on the flight so, or maybe Wi-Fi. Yeah, and then we also gave them the option to like, tell us more. What other things matter to you? You know, but ultimately, people giving us up to three things that matter to them. And then we look at how do you currently search and book flights within Africa? How are people doing it? We want to know if people are, you know, how they currently resolve this problem. And some people could be using agencies. I know agencies are a big, you know, a big deal within Africa in general. You know, in the West, it's mostly coming online and doing it yourself. Uh, in places like Nigeria, Ghana, agencies are where you go to. They will do everything for you. Whereas here, it's more self-aligned. You do it yourself. And so, airlines, that's another, com you know, like a source of competition. You look at travel comparison websites, uh, travel agents, you know, as I just alluded and then you look at what challenges do you face when searching for intra flights? What challenges do you face here? We've given an empty space just to, you know, get some more feedback. Tell us. So it's not us telling you. Let's hear what, you know, this user has to say. And then we then, you know, give them another opportunity. Tell us how do you usually stay informed about travel information within Africa? Some people use go on news websites, some people, you know, social media is such a big deal these days. Uh, some people use that, some people use friends and families, some is going on travel forums. Uh, and then in terms of uh, feedback, what would you be interested in using? Uh, is it, would you be interested in using a dedicated flight comparison platform for intra travel, uh, for, in, for intra Africa travel? You know, would you be interested? This is a very direct question. If this question, 80% of people said no. And, you know, that tells us a lot. 
that tells us let's shut down this idea immediately and put it put it aside and start thinking of another idea but if let's say you know the majority of people say yes of course this sounds like a great idea then that gives us confidence so the whole purpose of a survey or an interview is to get confidence because if i was speaking with anyone about this and i say yes i have gone and interviewed and spoke with customers and i've got the confidence here's about evidence a survey is about getting evidence so it's not just my anecdotal evidence of saying yeah, i've spoken with a lot of people and they said they would like to no this is about having evidence by form of survey or by form of interviews and then i collect all of that tangible evidence and so i can show to anyone that challenges the idea i can say here here's the evidence these people majority of them are saying they will be interested in using such a platform like ours and so flight scanner would be an amazing idea so i now have the evidence any any questions on the reasons for survey Uh, hello? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I don't have a question. What I wanted to find out is, uh, at what point do we do the survey? Awesome. Uh, so, it's our next phase now. So, the product proposal has been done, completed. We move on to surveys. We've written this great product proposal. We said, you know, the this platform is going to be a groundbreaking on demand service platform, you know, aimed at simplifying housekeeping chores. That's fantastic. Great. We've how we've highlighted the pain points. We've highlighted the solution. We said people, you know, it's a fast paced world now. And so people struggle with trying to balance the hectic, you know, responsibilities in their households. So they need help. And this platform is coming to give them that help. And so now and this is all based on our thinking. So we do a survey to test. Are these ideas that we're saying, is it really the truth? So we, we create a survey that we can test with people. And that means you create. How many of you have done surveys before? Maybe I should start with that. Have we all done surveys? As in completed a survey, someone has sent you a survey and said, please help me fill that survey. How many of you have filled out surveys before? Yeah, I've done. Yeah? I've done that. Yeah, that's it. Those surveys that were given to you were given to understand your opinion. And then the people that you did, you so once you completed the surveys, they took your surveys and then they analyzed them to understand not just your idea, but they analyze responses from, it could have been more than 20, 30, 100, 1,000 people. So they try to understand for insights. You know, to say overall, having analyzed 200 surveys, it seems that this proposal makes sense because people agree that house chores are now becoming a problem. And yes, a platform that propose, proposes to help them would be great and a lot of them will use it. You see, that's a validation. That's the reason why we do survey. If people now tell us in that survey that actually this is a rubbish idea, then that means our proposal, we can just abandon it and say, having done the survey, it seems the market doesn't want this product. Does that make sense? Go ahead, Nanya. Okay, um, I wanted to ask um, the medium mm. that you used to conduct the survey. Yeah. Is it like, a, like, you know, there's this medium of, you know, you print out a survey form and then you share, or do you conduct, conduct that online? How do you do that? Great, great, great question. So again, uh, and this is where everyone would be different. Some people would just print them out uh, and go in the street 
and you can then give someone a piece of paper they complete and that's it that's one way another way could be you know what we invite people to come into our office and then they'll do the surveys we'll give them a small thank you present and that's it they, you know they leave another medium could be online you send someone you create a survey using various platforms that are available out there and then once they complete that you get the response you can you know you can generate a link there's a platform called survey monkey uh, this platform create the best surveys you know you have billions of these platforms for creating surveys uh, and you can use one of these you know you generate your your survey and then you send you send it out and you, you can share it on whatsapp to people and also when you join a company the company any company you join they will have they do research every company does research so they will have their own ways of doing you know of doing surveys and most importantly as a pm you join a company you may not be creating surveys so the goal in, in this course is to at least ensure that if you have to, you can create, but you don't have to because you can join a company and the role of creating a survey could be something that is done by the research and development teams, or it could be done by the marketing team, but we give you the skills. So if you have to, you don't look lost. You can step in and confidently create a survey. Does, does that make sense, everyone? So it's not to say this will be part of what you do. But if it is required, as a PM, you're meant to be great at a, a range of things. And if you know how to, it's only a bonus for you. It would only ever be a bonus for you. Because now, if there's a conversation happening to understand surveys or to review surveys that have been completed by customers, and you have been invited to that meeting, you can actually contribute. You can challenge things. You can say, actually, I don't like how a question has been framed. I think the question being framed in a certain manner, it doesn't make sense, or maybe it's confusing for customers. So that's you adding value. That sort of feedback is invaluable. Immediately, everyone in the meeting would know that you're not a one-dimensional PM. Who just cares about features and that's it you actually care beyond just features that makes you so much more valuable in any company so being able to comment being able to give feedback so to answer your question there are various platforms you could use it just you use the one that you know you're comfortable with using every company that you join they will have a way to generate feedback and so you can find that out they will tell you they'll give you all of these things and in most cases if they don't give you you just reach out to your manager and say i want to conduct a survey your manager will point you in the right direction with whom to speak and then companies will also have their policies you know if a company has a policy on conducting you know research or a survey then you have to abide by those rules because if you don't, then you're potentially exposing the company uh, to being, you know, sued by someone. Any more questions on surveys? Okay. Uh, but, you know, surveys, interviews all very much the same so being able to have conversations that's the goal of it and if i was to summarize surveys and interviews in one word as in what is the point what is the purpose of it the purpose of it is to validate our product proposal that means is our product proposal is it the right thing to do is it the right way for us as a company to invest our money and the same questions that i ask Will be the same questions that will be asked in a company that already exists 
whether a small company, medium company, or large, you know, enterprise. A large enterprise trying to maybe enhance its product offering. Let's say Monzo, if you if you are in England, Monzo may want to create a new feature that will help them to better serve their customers. Or if you're in Nigeria, Palm Pay may want to introduce some new features. They will have to justify the introduction of those features in the same way. They will have to validate, are users really interested in these new features? And how you validate that is by conducting a survey. So you first create a product proposal for the new feature that you're trying to introduce within the business. So this is known as you know validating the problem statement to validate the pain points. Are these really you know pain points or are these my assumptions? You know, am I the only one seeing this problem? Or are other people also seeing these problems? Are they feeling the problems in the same way? And if they are, by the end of the survey, once I collect all of the responses, which is the next phase. So once you've design the survey and you get some feedback from your colleagues you can then share it out maybe you can create it using survey monkey or you can use a platform that you're comfortable with and you share it out and people complete those uh, surveys and it comes back to you so there's a skill set it takes a design and then it's a different side of the brain to now analyze, so the survey analysis, that's another key one. To analyze that, so you you may get responses of maybe just ten people, maybe just five people. That's easy. It's when you get a hundred plus responses. Now to analyze one hundred plus surveys, that's a lot to do. And so you need to be, you know, very adequate at. You know, just being very diligent. So you go from a single survey, you go through all, the, you know, you read the responses all the way to the end. And then the next one, then the next one, until you get to a thousand. In most cases, as I said earlier, you might join a team that has more than one or more than 10 or 20 product managers. So it's easier to share the workload. And so everything that we go through here, to designing the survey, you will do that as a unit, you do that as a group. And so as a group of you doing this, it makes it easier. And, and so you share the workload in terms of analyzing it and being able to understand, say maybe, maybe one of you does 50 reviews, you know, to analyze 50 survey responses and try to draw some insights, try to understand what customers are saying. You know, are they in agreement with your identification of a problem? Or are customers saying, actually, no, I would never use such a platform uh, as flight scanner within Africa. I think it's useless. It's a waste of time. I'm just going to go directly and book with Ibome, for example. I think I trust that more. I would never use any, you know, flight mediator service or platform. I think I will never use that. Or you can get some people saying, wow, this would be an amazing idea. Yes, I would definitely use that. Uh, and so that's that will be your job in, in the survey analysis to try and understand, you know, get the general feel of what people are saying. And you will end up with a single document where everyone will feed in and, you know, share what they've, they've read and summarize. And so here it would be something like this. In, a, in the sake of flight scanner, this is what was produced, which is uh, it's a demographic insight. So we spoke on demographics and we said that was about age and gender. And then here, so we see that age and frequency of travel. We said the majority of respondents fall within the 25 and 34 age group. That's something to know. That means the majority of people that responded to our survey were within that age group we didn't say all oh, just a majority so that's more than 50 percent you can say 51 percent or more were between 25 or 34 so that's good to know and these people 
uh, they're actively involved in intra-Africa travel. That tells us something. This is positive. And then we, we saw that monthly travel is common. And we also give our insight what that means. If monthly travel is common, this means that a demand for frequent travel solution is, you know, is, it's, it's something that customers are demanding. There's a demand for it. And as I said earlier, the whole purpose of doing these surveys or interviews is to understand, is there a demand? Is there a need for this idea or product or feature? And that's the goal. And so far, we're seeing that the answer might be yes. We're not sure yet. It's still too early to say. But so far on age and demographics inside, it's looking like it might be a yes. And so we look even you know deeper. Responses come from diverse African countries, emphasizing the need for a platform catering to a broad regional audience. So again, more positive news. You know, if our responses came from just a single country, then that might not be an intra-Africa platform. But since we're getting responses from different countries, that's great news. That tells us that this actually might be a problem within the continent itself, so which is good. And then we look at factors influencing flights, cho- you know, choices. And so here we look at like, you know, the travel preferences just to get some insights. And this is all about insights, you know, insights, not not facts, insights. And we look at, you know, prices, uh, the flight schedules, direct flights. These were top priorities for users, you know, which highlights the importance of affordability, convenience and efficiency. And so these things, these three key, you know, key uh predictors essentially tell us that people care about affordability convenience and efficiency when they think of intra africa flights they think in terms of these key metrics which is is it affordable is it convenient and is it efficient and efficiency speaks to you know how well they move you from a to b you know do they waste your time and also is it convenient and affordability, we can just link to price. You know, is it is is the price? You know, is it fair? Is it adequate? Does it make sense? And so, again, is leaning more towards a yes. A yes, flight scanner would actually solve a problem. And then we look further down. We see that airline reputation and travel time are also significant factors. So having a great reputation as an airline uh, is something that customers look for. And knowing this helps us. It means that when we start looking at building partnerships, we can look to build partnerships with airlines that customers really value. And those airlines that customers don't value, we can deprioritize them because customers essentially are telling us, what they want and so being a uh, customer focus is critical for us and so we aim to do the things that customers want and less of the things that customers don't want if customers are telling us that they value airline reputation then we need to listen and try to build great relationships with airlines that customers respect and then we look at the uh, online travel agencies again uh, these are popular means that people use in booking. So agencies uh, do all the bookings and give to people. And some people are able to do so themselves. So they go online and do it themselves. So this emphasizes the, you know, the importance of digital presence for our platform. If we can get people to transition from agencies to doing it by themselves. So you can see, so far... We've looked at, you know, some some positives, more so positives. People are really keen on such a platform that, you know, that they can use. And so far has been leaning more towards that. Yes, that yes, flat scanner would actually resolve a problem. You You know, I'm yet to come across anything here that suggests otherwise. And this is the purpose of gathering insights 
So now within it within the business as a PM, I can share this with my stakeholders. So people uh, within finance, the ones that are interested, I can say, would you like to know? It seems that we've we've got a new product here that would really solve a you know a good problem in, in the market for customers. Would you like to know? I can schedule a meeting and take you through it, or I can send you the report. You can read for yourself. So these are ways I can communicate, and of course with with the product team itself, everyone is aware of what we've been doing, and we find a way to maybe clean this up and put it in a in a you know a much better format if needed, but essentially all that is needed here to share with people is present so I can send this to anyone that wants to know and this is a justification that we needed so if you remember at the beginning I said that we need to justify why we've 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 said this is a problem and if that's the case now we have the evidence because we've we've given a survey to more than you know a hundred people and they've come back with overall confirming our assumptions in our product proposals that yes they would love to use this platform if it existed i think someone has a question go ahead Nanye. okay um i have a question yes so, go ahead so i wanted to find out as mm. a product manager do you only get to work, you know, with tech? I mean, in tech or with tech, tech, or you can work with products like, like okay, for instance, let's say toothpaste, mm. close up. Mm. That's a physical product. That's what I mean. Mm. Or is it just like apps and, uh, you know, virtual ones? So the great question. So you have a physical product managers and digital product managers and depending on where your passion lies, you know, so you can, you can do new product development in physical products. Like you just mentioned toothpaste, for instance, I mean, I go to supermarkets and I see lots and lots of toothpaste. They solve different pain points. Some promise to help you brighten you know, whiten your, you, you know, your teeth and so on. And then some promises, you know, if you, if whilst you brush, you bleed, they promise to help you not bleed. So you can see that the idea of being a PM, it's all in the same fashion. It just, we're discussing the digital elements, but the core skill sets, you can, you know, there's a divergence. The divergence with physical products is that you start looking at, you know, new product development, and that's a whole new, a range of you know tools in itself but we're focused on digital products in this course does that does that make sense yes thank yeah, you that's okay so if you join you know any any company of your choice think of any company that comes to mind and you join that company and they bring you in if it's a tech business they're bringing you to optimize to help them you know, fulfill their goals and objectives. And if I join Facebook, you know, they brought me in to do something for them, whether to join any part of the business that I join, as a PM, of course, in the capacity of a PM. You know, I haven't joined Facebook to go be a, a lawyer. You know, I joined them to be, you know, to join that digital product development. In, in that capacity, then I help them to fulfill goals around, you know, product management. Yes, go ahead. So, uh, as someone who, I mean, who is conversant with uh, the rules in product management, whether physical product or whatever, mm. so which one, can you advise better on, you know, on the choice or, you know, what the more viable one? In, in what sense? Viable in what sense? 
<laughs> like, <laughs> like you talked about the product, let's say the toothpaste thing, mm. you know, being a product manager right. in that line mm. and being a product manager working with uh, Facebook. Mm. They are two different. I mean, the other one yeah. is product, yeah. uh, physical product. The yeah. other one is personal. So I'm asking, I mean, in the market, in the open market, which of the two is more, I mean, promising and, you know. I think they're, they're all very promising. Uh, but I, I mean, right now, everyone is trying to get in tech. Uh, as as I, I illustrated, I mean, I showed here earlier. I mean, look at his role in tech. It's, you know, it's between 50. I mean, this is in, I can search for, this is, I'm searching in London. I can search in the US, for instance, you know, and I will get different. So if you mean promising in terms of a salary or in terms of uh, fulfillment, then fulfillment is, it's uh, being satisfied. That's sub, That's very subjective. Sorry, in terms of availability of jobs. Mm. And in tech, in tech as well. I mean, here I just search product management role in London. It's almost sixteen thousand. Just this is just London. This is just one city, right? So I can search. I don't know any 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 city. I can search Birmingham. I can search. Uh, I can search in the U.S. I can search anywhere. So there's there are loads. So in terms of availability, you know, the market is, is right. They need more, need more people in the market than I would say is every business now is a technology business. That's the thing. So you need to have product managers that are helping you to shape and think of how to secure your future as a business. Otherwise, what will happen is a, a startup somewhere will come along and disrupt you. Look at just how it's been. I mean, I, I was shocked uh, last year when I was in Nigeria and I could open a bank account in this less than five minutes. I'd been trying to open a bank account with, uh, I think it was Access Bank. And I mean, I spent well over three days to no success. And I did that with Pompeii in less than five minutes. I mean, that tells you disruption. So... And there's so many people who don't have bank accounts. So these pe these group of people are known as the unbanked. The majority of them don't have, you know, government IDs to open bank accounts with your traditional GTB bank, your access bank, your first bank. And so these young companies are coming up with ideas and they're doing so with a product-based thinking. You see, so... They're utilizing people that think in terms of digital technology and how can we how can we have how can we drive more people to join and subscribe to our products and services so that's the digital side of things and which would i say is being you know it's it's more prosperous or is more enticing uh for people to get into i'll say get into the one that you're passionate about because if, if you're passionate about something, then you will learn, you know, you will learn all that you need to know to be the best, you know, or the best that you can be at it. And ultimately, that should bring, you know, the best fulfillment. I chose to go in, digi in the digital side because that's where I have a passion. And it just so happened that it's thriving all around the world today. You know, I've just shown you an example of roles. You can see it here. That's almost 16,000 roles. And so there are more and more. As the world continues to evolve and advance, think of how we're all meeting. We're all based in different parts of the world. But we've, we've met in this platform today. That's as a result of technology, you know, provided to us by Google. And, you know, in the instance of the Google Meet, uh, 10 years ago, I don't think we could do this. You know, so you can imagine how the world is evolving. So more problems are being solved digitally. And not that we all need physical products. So it's just, I would say, going in the direction that you're passionate about. I hope that answers the question.
Yes, thank you. That's okay. I'm I'm conscious that I shared, you know, quite a dense topic today. Uh, and it's something that it, it to me maybe seems it, it seems maybe I'm I'm thinking it's too heavy, but effectively it's it's a key process that you'll be doing as a PM. You know, being able to, you know, whether participate in interviews or being able to conduct the interviews, you know, just the, the conversation. So not yet the question you ask me and the answer that I gave, that could be an interview. That's so when you hear interview, don't think of it as being something so difficult, so challenging. It's just having a conversation. And when you're doing surveys, it's a matter of now turning those questions into a presentable format. Like I have illustrated that people can answer. And then, so something like this, turning those into questions like these, and then you put it in a platform of your choice and send it out to as many people as you can and get those responses back. Now, the question you might ask me is how do I know who to send it to? And that would come from you being able to have conversations with, you know, product management is a team is a team idea. It's not just you going at things alone. It's not possible. No one person is an island. So it's you being able to have conversations with your manager, with your colleagues, and they will point you in the right directions. They will tell you, okay, to get our our database. So every every company will have a database of people. And, you know, the people in research and development, they will point you to say, here are some email addresses from our database. Go ahead and send it to every one of these people. And then your role will then be to just copy the emails and paste and send the link. And maybe write an email that would, you know, guide people on how to complete the survey. We'll be, hi everyone, please find attached the link below and complete the survey. Tell us your thoughts on this potential feature or idea or business. And then that's it. You just sit back and wait for the response to come in. And so being able to, you know, meet the needs uh, of customers, this is how you do so. You first need to validate if they actually have those problems. Because here we've said a lot of good things. We've used a lot of good, you know, good words. Like, you know, to you know, access a bridge, connecting individuals in need of housekeeping services. All of this sounds very nice to the ears. But now here we try to validate, you know, are all of the things we've mentioned, are they actually problems? Are people having problems with housekeeping? Really? Are they really having problems? You know, and then when we get those surveys back, we'll look through each and every one of them and we start to get an, an insight, start to get an idea. Yes, it seems people are really having problems. No, it seems people are not having problems. And therefore, you can make a decision. Yes, let's continue. Or no, let's not continue. Let's have a discussion, guys. That's how we learn. So questions, thoughts, please throw them my way. May not be a question, maybe a comment, anything you that you weren't clear about. Anything you like to be explained a little bit further. Awesome. It seems we're all experts at designing surveys uh, and giving them out to people to complete and then analyzing those surveys. And then, you know, gaining the understanding of whether our product proposals make sense, you know, in terms of what customers want, in terms of customer needs. Every product that you have out there goes through this process. Every feature that you see goes through this feature, you know, goes through this process. I mentioned earlier the BBC. The BBC has one of the biggest agile teams in 
I say in 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 the UK, you know they they have well over a uh, thousand product teams, and within those product teams, there are multiple groups of people, and so research that they do, it's phenomenal, and they're always getting, you know, feedback, always getting feedback from people, and so, on our side as PMs, it's always to keep a listening ear trying to understand how can we better serve people yeah everything here was tested you know feedback was gotten from customers nothing just comes here by itself without being you know tested so someone comes up with an idea i think we should maybe for instance a new feature could be let's have something you know something like this that summarizes what's happening around the UK. All right, this is a feature. This feature here, let's have a feature that summarizes news around the UK. And okay, it's a lovely idea. Now someone creates a product proposal for this feature and then goes in and does a survey and then they analyze it and it turns out, yes, the majority of people would love to see such a feature because it will give them quick access to news of what's happening or the core things that they should really know about the UK. And these are some of the things that are going on here in the news. Uh, at the moment, you know, our prime minister being a bit uh, funny and, and so on. And so these things people care about. I can click into it and it turns out majority of people are interested in such a feature. And so the BBC proceeded with it. And they developed it with the engineering team and they launched it and here it is and at some point down the line it may cease to be a valuable feature in which case it will be removed from here and something else might be replaced but the key is nothing gets anywhere here without being tested without being validated from customers and so what we're doing here is just trying to validate our proposals. So that's the purpose of surveys and interviews, to validate that customers are also seeing the same things that we're seeing, that they're experiencing the world as we think they might be. Because when we wrote the product proposals, we made a lot of assumptions on their pain points. You know, we, we, we assume that customers are unable to do their chores by themselves because they are busy you know and in you know in such a way we have to validate that in our surveys any any questions none for me awesome wow i'm i'm glad that you know, we've we've gotten this far with it that we've gone through the proposals, uh, and today we've done the the surveys to understand, you know, to validate the problems, the pain points that we identified in our product proposals, and then we looked at how you might analyze those surveys. You get a bunch of surveys based on how many you gave out. Some people will respond to them. Some people will never respond to them, and so our role is to go through the, those surveys and try to understand the responses from customers and build our understanding, so insights, you know, and that is a, is a skill set that comes from, you know, practice. And as you saw today, is getting responses that tells you, yes, I believe this platform is going to be a, you know, a success. I said, yes, I will use it. If customers tell you they will use the platform, then you have to believe in it. Every product you use today goes through the same process. We mentioned the likes of uh, Uber. We mentioned the likes of you know, WhatsApp that we use. And I, I've used Google Meet as an example. You know, All of these platforms went through product validation. Validation simply means customers telling you, yes, I think this product will help me better in my life. Currently, Google Meet is helping us all because there is no way we'll, we'll all be here right now without it. So that tells you that it's helping and that's what validation means. 
somewhere along the line, Google sat down people and got this validation. And it turns out that yes, they were right. And today we're all benefiting from it, from them proceeding with the implementation of Google Meet. So, and that is what we're all trying to also learn, how to validate our ideas and get that feedback and get that strong, you know, acceptance that yes, this product, when released, it would really help people out there. Making money is secondary. It's, is your product going to help people? That's the, that's the primary thing. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, and next time, we'll look at how you take your, you know, the feedback and start turning those into product requirements. And so we're seeing that we now know how to understand pain points. We now know how to validate whether those pain points are real. So we can think from a customer perspective. So as PMs, whenever you're creating something, you always, you always have to have your audience in mind. And so understanding what your audience are feeling from a pain point perspective is critical. If you understand that customers are having problems in specific areas, then you can tailor a solution that will help them to resolve those problems. And so next week, we understand how we can tailor any product that we look at to help resolve the pain points of customers. And again, as always, we're using SkyScan Flight Scanner as our example to help us, you know, build the bridge and to help us understand. So that's our primary case study that we'll be using. And for everyone, I would like for you to you know, now practice the concepts that we've learned today, which is of creating a survey. And on here for you is uh, Choice Connect. So I, will, I would love to see, even if it's just five questions, you know, you don't have to create 10 questions. Just, I want everyone for their idea to create, to write down at least five questions that you might ask someone that would help you to see whether that person has a problem in 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 you know in, in your your proposal as in you propose to let's use uh, non yes for example so your idea is choice connect so you can write down five questions that will help you to understand whether people would be interested in using your platform that's the exercise that's the goal of the five questions and if you were to then sit down with someone and have a conversation with them. You will bring up those five questions and ask them, and they will tell you. And one of the questions might be, will you use a platform that helps you uh, to find people that will come in and, and do your housekeeping for you? If all five people say yes, then that's a solid validation that Choice Connect is a great idea. And if Maybe one of them says no, and four of them said yes. It's still a good idea. Now, if, if it was the opposite, where five of them said no, or four of them say no, then that tells you that Choice Connect will not be a good idea. You can start making those sort of conclusions. So, is everyone clear of what the exercise is? Yes, yeah, very clear. Awesome. So, for our... For our ideas, and as I said, your idea needs not be a brand new company. In this case, your idea is, is essentially it's a startup, which is great because you get to learn so much more. But if your idea is just a feature, as I said here, the idea of a feature is around, for instance, this is a feature. It's just something where you look at an existing company, in this case, the BBC, and say, what new feature that if they introduce could help them? really relate better with your customers in this case the bbc chose something like i mean all of these are features but you know we, we use this as our example around the uk for example and they said this will give people you know quick up-to-date news around what's happening in the country so you can go on any website and think of a feature that you think might help them to relate better with your customers and and then you you create you know a proposal a proposal just means why 
tell us why we should do this. And then you, you do that in, in the context of something like this, you know, to highlight the existing pain points without that thing. And then your proposed solution and so on. And as I said, you don't need mirror for that. You just need a text editor like this to just compose your idea. And that's it. And the more you do these, initially it will be quite difficult. But the more you do them, you build so much more confidence in yourself. And then by the time you do your third one, you'll be an expert. And you get better. So you, if you join any company and they ask you to contribute to a proposal that the company is already building, you can do so confidently. And the reason why I share all of these templates with you, because they're templates you can use in any company. You can join them. I said, not to worry, I have my own template already. And you proceed confidently to create something like this. It would be an amazing first impression for you to make. I hope that clarifies it all. So uh, next week, I would love for us to review what everyone has, has done. We'll spend maybe 30 minutes just briefly uh, hearing you know, the, the questions that you've written down. And yeah, we can discuss that. Go ahead, Noye. Okay, just to ask, please, when is the due date for the assignment? Uh, on, on, the on Sunday. Sunday, okay, we yeah. submit before Sunday or on Sunday. Uh, if you can submit before Sunday, that, that's even better, you know, that's, I can even look at it. So if you, if you can write down those five questions uh, and you, you could even just send them to me on, on Slack. You know, just come on Slack and send them to me. I would see them and I will respond. I'll tell you, yes, that's great. That's fantastic. Uh, and just this exercise is just to help you, you know, practice. Just get, I can give you all the theory. If you don't practice, you know, you'll still be lacking behind. So just, can you write down five questions that will help you test whether your idea will be a good thing for the world? or not okay thank you that's okay go ahead Sahid. yes are we going to choose any company that we need to so the oh, you said the uh, assignment to the um to slack for no. each person no remember we've we've done uh, proposals we've done okay everyone yeah. by now should have an idea Yes. So, yeah, yes. everyone by now should have an idea. So here in this phase now, I, I want it to be practical based learning. So we've learned the concepts and then you take the ideas and apply it to your idea. You take the concepts that we went through today and apply it to your idea. And the concept from today is, can you formulate questions that you can use to validate, to test whether your idea is, you know, will be a great thing for the world. Or does your idea make sense to customers? That's essentially the purpose of, you know, the exercise. Please, everyone, I would love for your questions now, because if it's unclear now, it will be even unclearer the longer you leave it. So let's try and address it here. Do we, do we all understand? Hello. Um, Hi, Charles. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Okay, the um the five questions you are talking about is they um on um uh, kind of an a survey um questions Correct. about um our proposal. Survey questions. Okay. Survey questions. Yes. So we've spent today's session looking at surveys. All right. And we've seen surveys that were designed for my idea. So now I'm saying, can you think of some questions for your idea to validate your idea? Okay. Yeah. And I've read your proposal. Uh, I think it's, it's great. Yeah. So go ahead and 
Think of some questions that you could use to test, to validate your idea. And as I've iterated, uh, let me iterate for the, you know, at least uh, again, which is the whole purpose. I, I did ask the question, how many of you have done surveys, have filled out surveys for people? And majority of you said you have. And I, I did, I then proceeded to mention that those surveys are done by people trying to get your idea, your opinion of something, whatever that may be. It's essentially your opinion, and that's what you know. I'm asking you to do, not to actually go design a whole survey and send to people, but in you being able to think of questions that, if you had to sit down with someone and design a survey or do an interview, what questions might you ask that would help you to understand whether the problem that you think you have identified is actually real? is actually valid awesome thank you everyone i look forward to you know discussing this further next week to understand your uh, your your questions that you've framed and come up with and then we can we'll proceed from there and then we'll we'll spend maybe the first 30 minutes going through this and then we'll then proceed to the next phase uh, of the product concepts. Thank you all and have a great week ahead.